Hi, I'm Barbara McGrew. I am former film instructor at Burlington College, former vice president of the Vermont International Film Festival, sometime producer, and cineast. I'm here tonight to present the film Scarlet Street by Fritz Lang. In last year's movie, Big Eyes, a husband passes off his wife's art as his own, much to her disgust and consternation, and she is forced to end that relationship. In Scarlet Street, a floozy assumes the artistic identity of our anti-hero, Chris Cross, and he is so in love with her, so smitten and so submissive that he is almost glad. I first encountered Scarlet Street several years ago when I was teaching a class in film noir. Released in 1945, it and its 1944 companion piece, The Woman in the Window, are great examples of early film noir. They're both directed by Fritz Lang, and they both have the same lead cast. They illustrate film noir with its roots in German Expressionism and the Weimar street film, which is a little more realistic. The story of a respectable man brought low by his slavish devotion to a woman has parallels in von Sternberg's 1930, The Blue Angel, especially in the scene where Edward G. Robinson, playing the artist Chris Cross, wants to paint his beloved Kitty and ends up on his knees painting her toenails instead. They'll be masterpieces, she croons derisively. Indeed, patterns of dominance and submission, masochism and sadism abound in Scarlet Street. In the very beginning of the movie, we see a happy couple passing on a dark, wet city street. The other couples in the film are anything but happy. A hallmark of film noir is the femme fatale, the fatal woman, here played by Joan Bennett as Kitty March. The femme fatale is powerful and sexy, and she's often contrasted with the femme attrapée, the trap woman, trapped by the patriarchy. It is often said that the character of the femme fatale represents male fears of female liberation and changing roles so prominent during and after World War II. But in Scarlet Street, we have a variation. Chris's wife is no sweet thing. Her reaction to patriarchy is to be a dominating, emasculating harridan. And our femme fatale, the sexy Joan Bennett, is submissive and allows herself to be beaten up and in fact enjoys being beaten up repeatedly by her pimp boyfriend Johnny, played by Dan Dorier. Scarlet Street is the product of the vision of the great director Fritz Lang. Austrian-born, half-Jewish, Lang grew up with the German film industry in the 20s and 30s. Until in 1934, he was forced to flee the Nazis director of such masterpieces as M and Metropolis. Wang's films are full of symbolism. He also includes themes of the duality of human nature, good and evil, existing in one character, as it does in our hero, Chris Cross, and themes of the hypocrisy of institutions. You'll see this in the beginning, the scene of Chris's 25th anniversary of his employment dinner where he is supposed to go gaga and everybody does over a watch that he's pre presented while his boss is watching his watch repeatedly so he can make his breakaway to meet his mistress. Brooks Atkinson, in his review of Scarlet Street, gave it a lukewarm review, but he really did like the performance of Dan Durier. He also was very impressed with the act that accompanied the film. He gave great praise to a then unknown comedian by the name of Sid Caesar. Again, from Fritz Lang in 1945, Scarlet Street, with Joan Bennett as the femme fatale, Dan Dorier as her sleazy boyfriend, and the incomparable Edward G. Robinson as Criss Cross, the artist Manquet, who has a serious problem with perspective.